So back in August 2017, Adam Ellis, a comic book artist, started posting some strange threads about his house being supposedly haunted by this entity called Dear David. So the original thread started off with him stating that he had a haunted house and that the entity was trying to kill him. He continues on by stating that he had a dream where he experienced sleep paralysis and saw Dear David at the end of his bed in a rocking chair. According to Adam, the figure in the chair had a misshapen head, and as it started to approach him, he woke up screaming, decided to draw what Dear David looked like, and here it is. So some time passes and he has another dream where he experiences a woman in a library. She approaches him and says, you've seen Dear David, haven't you? As at the time he didn't know the name of this entity, he's very confused and asks who? As she replies, Dear David, you saw him. So as the dream continues on, she warns Adam that Dear David is in fact dead and he only appears at midnight and you can only ask him two questions. Never ask him a third question or he will kill you. So a few weeks go by and Adam has yet another dream similar to the first where he is in bed and David is at the end of the bed in the rocking chair. So he starts to ask Dear David, how did you die? Which Dear David replies, an accident in a store. Adam then asks David, how did you die in the store? As David mumbles back, a shelf was pushed onto my head. Shaken, Adam asks, who pushed the shelf? In which David doesn't reply. Terrified, Adam just realizes that he asks dear David a third question. A couple months go by and Adam doesn't experience anything more. He thinks dear David forgot about him because he moved upstairs. Well, it ends up, he actually didn't. Four nights in a row, his cats start gathering at his doorway at midnight. As this is happening, he takes his camera and takes a picture through the eye hole of his door and captures this. When we zoom into the photo, you can see a shadow on the hallway wall. Unsure if this is a smudge, he takes another photo through the peephole and then a photo with the door open. When you compare the peephole photos side by side, you can clearly see a difference. And little did Adam know, this was far from over. Whether this is real or a hoax, we can't help but be intrigued by how well-written and well-documented this thread is. We highly suggest you Googling, Dear David. All right, so since y'all asked for more, we thought we'd give a part two a go. If you don't know about the Dear David haunting, check out our TikTok for part one. So, after he notices his cats constantly gathering at his door at exactly midnight, he posts this tweet. It's happening so often, he now considers it routine. As this all seems very small to us, experiencing these things one after another can get you worrying, so why not set up protection? He sets up an audio recording app to record sounds while he sleeps. As this is all intriguing, there aren't any EVPs caught, but the next set of evidence is where it starts to get pretty unnerving. After spending a weekend away, he buys a Polaroid camera and he starts taking photos around the house. But when he takes a photo of the hallway that's plenty well lit, this is what develops. He even takes a video of him taking a group of photos and lets them develop in real time to show that he's not making this up. And again, a black photo appears for the hallway shot. As weird as it is, he tries to calm himself down by pointing out that there could be a logical explanation for it. The next day, he smudges his apartment with sage, both in the hallway and also the green rocking chair he said he saw Dear David in. Unfortunately, the cleanse did not work. After months of not dreaming of Dear David, he appears in Adam's dream that very night. According to Adam, he's much smaller, almost shrunken, and he just sits there staring at him. A couple days later, some more tweets are posted. Two weeks of the cats at the door and weeks of recording as well. And he notices a trend at 3 a.m. The recorder picks up a static electricity sound for five or so minutes. 
and then stops. Some days later, he claims he falls asleep early from being inexplicably exhausted and has a dream where Dear David is dragging him through a warehouse and Adam is just remaining silent. He acknowledges this as being dream logic, but then he ends up waking up and noticing a huge bruise on the same arm David was dragging him with. Adam tries to find the logic in this incident, but it all starts to become a lot clearer as he makes his routine walk to get coffee, noting that there's a repair shop that is always packed that is on the way to get the coffee. As he passed it, you guessed it, it's been completely abandoned and gutted, all but a wooden green chair. He simply can't ignore this and remembers. The first time Adam saw David, he was sitting in a green chair. All right, part three of the Dear David Haunting. Check out our TikTok for parts one and two. So after finding the repair shop gutted on his walk to the coffee shop and the building empty of all but a green chair, he grabs his coffee and on the way back, the doors were then shut and have remained closed since, according to Adam. After dreaming being dragged through a warehouse, then finding this one emptied out, he's officially creeped out and starts having trouble sleeping. He starts noticing the cats have a new routine with the front door. Around 10 p.m., they gather cry for about 15 minutes, then walk away like nothing's happening. Then later that week, after the cats cry at the door, at around 10.30 p.m. he starts receiving phone calls from an unmarked number. Thinking it could deter a solicitor, he answers one call. He waits briefly for an automated answer, but nothing happens. Instead, Adam recalls just a static on the other end of the line. A static, he says, sounded very similar to the static caught on his sleep app. After a minute, the static stops and he hears nothing. As he keeps listening, he thinks he hears a faint breathing on the other end. Very faint. Then just as he's about to hang up, he hears a small voice say, Hello. The tone of the hello he mentions was unsettling as he panics and hangs up. He doesn't know what to do but closes all the windows and turns on every single light. He stays up all night watching TV, afraid to sleep. Trying to stay logical, all of the incidents are starting to make him unable to make sense of all of them. Because of all the creepy things lining up, he moves the green chair from his room to his living room. As an upcoming trip to Tokyo is approaching, he purchases a 24-7 Wi-Fi nanny cam to watch his cats while overseas. He tests it while out one night. His phone pings him periodically, alerting him the cats are playing, you know, normal stuff. But then, at 11 p.m., he receives a notification of motion detected. So he checks the feed and sees nothing. He watches one more time and still sees nothing. But the third time, he notices something. The chair. It starts rocking on its own. Adam notes that nearby windows are always closed due to him using AC during that summer. Finding this footage unnerving, he couldn't do anything about it, so he flips his phone off and tries not to panic. 30 minutes later, he receives another motion alert and sees this. A turtle shell on the wall, which he claimed is sentimental, falls off the wall suddenly. As he comes home, he's too nervous to turn the camera back on and explains the day has been quiet anyways. Still feeling uneasy, he places the chair in the hallway and continues to hope for the best. And now part four of the Dear David Haunting. And this one gets a little gruesome, so viewers' discretion is advised. Also to those claiming this was fake because of the movie deal he acquired, this is not true. He still stands by all of the story. The company studio of whom he worked for at the time, BuzzFeed, is producing the movie with IT producer Dan Lin. Even in an interview with The Wrap, he stands by these events stating he just wanted to tell his story. So folks, guess we gotta use our own judgment here. A week then passed before another burst of tweets start. That Saturday night, while he was sleeping, it recorded the cats in the living room. It seemed to be nothing notable, but then he notices a cat freak out and jump over something invisible. Although not pointed out in the thread, if you look a moment after the cat jumps, the cup on the table moves, catching both of the cat's attention. Not sure if Adam caught that later on, but wow, that is officially poltergeist activity. One of the things as an investigator I find pertinent to the story 
are the times of the day he reports these events. He mentions writing down everything as it happens, and the random times and dates tied with a burst of tweets at a time helps validate the authenticity of these events. Not to say this isn't fake, but if so, the constant documentation really makes it more believable. But anyways. The next night is followed by some strange footed once again, but this time it's of his cat Maxwell doing this on and off for hours, as if looking for something or looking at something, noting it as odd behavior and also that bugs aren't an issue in his home. Adam then captures this at the end of the night. Adam mentions he can't shake the feeling something has entered his apartment and that everything feels off. Almost two weeks later, he begins to have nightmares, more intense than his normal dreams, he claims. The afternoon of September 16th, he tweeted he took a nap and had a dream he could not shake. In the dream, he is in bed and rolls over to face the other direction. On the pillow next to him was a severed head with the spine snaking down his bed. The head, somehow still alive, was staring right at him with a giant smile plastered on its face. He screams, what happened to you? The head smiles even bigger and groans. It feels great. After that, he wakes up to find it dark outside and everything completely quiet. 